Hey, welcome to Uberdozer. Today we're going to lay some bricks, uh, brick veneer, etc. Here's the bricks. Oh yeah, gotta have those bricks. Phase one, and those are brick tongs. In case you've never seen brick tongs. For a mason, a brick mason, or a mason's laborer, they are like the best thing since the wheel. You can just load them up with a lot more bricks than you could carry without. So, I got a skid of bricks. Uh, I think this is, well, it was three all, in all told for this project. I wanted to put a, a hose bit this is for the, this little overhead. The pattern that we're going to use for the feature area, the potting shed thing. The first and thing the to do there is the sill. Is, uh, where the, the white pipe so is for the hose bib. And now I'm just going to wet down the whole area and some of the bricks oh. that I'll be using. Uh, that is kind of important on a dry day to keep the, the brick from sucking the water so quickly out of the uh, mortar and making it dry without allowing it to uh, bond. So you saw there, I'm, it's just Quickcrete I'm using, so it makes it faster and easier, and it's, uh, uh, the mix is always uniform. So for the sill, at the bottom of the uh, feature, panel basically what i'm doing i set the leftmost brick and the rightmost brick got them level with one another and uh, basically then you fill in the blanks it's mostly about setting the brick well in this case i'm not trying to butter the sides and uh, you know do the most with every move like a mason probably would um, but I'm setting the bricks the best I can. I am not a mason. Um, I really like masonry, though. I love the looks of brick. So I'm, I'm setting the brick and uh, and then pushing the mortar in between to support each brick and let it harden into a, a good and dependable construction. And then I'm leaving the, the final finish and striking of the joints until after that, I'm getting just enough to, like I said, to support the brick and the gap to keep those as uniform as possible. And this is what it's what it's like. It's surprising how much mortar it takes to bed those, the sill and the water table on top uh, because of that angle. Because you have to, you really need to want to pr tap the brick into place, okay? So you want it always to start higher so that you can get it to the correct position. You know, starting lower just <laughs> it doesn't work. And there, there's what I was talking about, is uh, getting some more mortar in between to, to support everything. And the, the light and the dark is the clouds going overhead. Kind of beautiful. So here's the the beginning of the the feature panel. I wanted in the in the design that you saw of me in the dry design that you saw before. I wanted those dark colored. Uh, I think they're like two by two or, or less, a little less um, pieces of brick. To uh, well for the hose bib to stick out uh, from one of those two by two um, panels. And it's got an escutcheon and everything's and everything, so there's no, you know, completely replaces that, that small brick. There's one of the small bricks going in. Uh, 
Um, people who don't do brick don't realize how important compression is. Compressing the mortar, I should say, is, uh, is very important, especially when you get to the exposed uh, area of the joint. You have to compress it substantially with a, um, you know, striking tool, a curved striking tool. Not, not the one that I'm using right now. That's a, a slicker, which is just a narrow margin trowel. And, um, I, you know, I'll get some compaction with that. But when I want to absolutely last thing finish that joint, I want it to be compressed pretty well because that uh, keeps the, the joint from being porous. Uh, and showing that porous face to the weather, that would be a bad thing because then the water could get in directly into the mortar and uh, yeah, begin its work of causing damage. So if there, if that compression is is done to the outside of the joint, you don't get that porosity, you don't get that um, access, the water doesn't get that access. So, like I said, I'm, I'm setting all these bricks, okay, because I'm not, you know, sure how it's going to go, and I want to make sure I don't make, go too fast and make mistakes. I mean, I'm not a fast mason anyway, but here, so setting the, setting the brick and then, and then doing the joints is a pain, and it's uh, tedious, but I opted for that, for these more, uh, more technically, you know, kind of special uh, joints and so that's what it is here you know pushing mortar in until it fills that whole cavity and then smoothing it a little bit and later I will put um, the the striking tool to it and uh, get that concave concave finish so in this particular part now I didn't get any video of uh, the veneer, uh, the regular brick wall kind of um, element. That goes much faster, or I, I can work much faster just putting the, setting the brick and with the mortar in it already, on it already and, and moving along much more quickly. This is the um, kind of the finished panel. Um, needs some strike, you know, some joint uh, filling. Uh, and there's the, you see the sill? What I did with that, uh, with the hose bib, was I put the female plastic um, fitting into the into the hose bib, then held it in the right place so I knew where my cut would be. I cut the pipe and then just when I was, the brick was just up below the hose bib and I just glued it and stuck it right in there and, uh, you know, ready to go onward. And there's no video of this, but I, I the escutcheon was a little bit loose even though the, the, the pipe and everything was perfectly tight. The escutcheon, so I, I what I used, because it's extremely tight by then, I used one of the one of the striking tools as a chute and the other striking tool as a as a spoon and I just dripped it in there and let that loose mortar go get behind that uh, escutcheon and it made it nice and solid. So just cutting um, pre-cutting the uh, upper water table bricks. Um, I put bird's mouths in most of, not this one, this is the first brick. I didn't want to, to show a bird's mouth from the, from the side, the exposed side of that brick. But the rest of them have bird's mouths, and I only really needed them um, over the fe feature panel itself. Over the veneer, it didn't need it. Um, and there you see a few of the, the first bricks in there. Obviously, you can see that that mortar. Um, I didn't feel I needed to worry about covering that up. 
that um, that rapid whacking of the brick uh, that you saw is uh, there's a little bit of a bulb edge on many of these bricks it's it looks like you'll see it later in the video but it looks like um, they took the clay they cut the clay of the brick and they laid it down and it kind of sagged down and it made this little bulge at the around the bottom edge of the brick and on the on a wall or the veneer it, it is it doesn't matter at all but on the on this watershed water table um, it it's you know what's on the top um, along the top face um, running running out and it it doesn't look good so I just knock it off uh, with the trowel and uh, meh, it's it's just fine after that so now spacing um, you know is always a thing I went out here just using the uh, that half inch margin trowel or slicker to space you know to, to, as a guide to spacing but then right here um, I had a little more room than I wanted so I laid those bricks in there like that and evenly spaced and um, pencil marked those joints on the top of the panel and you know if if that section is you know nine sixteenths maybe even five eighths and the rest are half inch you really don't notice it this brick is i should mention about this brick this is um whatever i think it's glengarry brick um this is their kind of their answer to a used brick look so this is all new brick but it's got a you know the, the tolerance of the brick sizing is pretty loose uh, both in every direction so that actually it makes it look a little bit warmer a little bit homier if those if those descriptions make sense to you um, more like a, like a colonial brickwork or, or something like that colonial yeah um, which surprisingly makes it easier to lay brick now because you don't have to have these sharp uh, sharp lines you know that are perfect um, because it's never going to be perfect so even if you lay it perfect um, it's not going to look perfect so that doesn't mean you can be reckless and you, you'll see I'm not being reckless but uh, um, it, it really does it's it's a forgiving kind of brick and uh, I mean I don't really know when bricks in the United States when bricks came into being manufactured and uh, and regularly widely used but uh, I think at some point they did you, you know start to Pave streets with brick and and uh, such before they built a lot of houses with them. Obviously, that was a very expensive way to build a house until until the manufacturer was um, very established. So I got to the the end just before the corner and uh, now going to the other side. Ah, so this brick I'm marking and rather than cutting it with the with a diamond diamond disc I uh, decided to cut it this way so that you could see it it's if you don't have those kind of tools you could it, it, you could still do a fair amount of brickwork because it's almost always possible to hide an edge uh, and hide a cut and there you go see it's it's not super neat but it's not super sloppy 
and I just do a little more dressing on the the one edge that's going to show once everything is done is the the side of the brick facing out um, everything else really it's going to get filled with mortar I'm not going to see it so if if you are just starting out and you don't want to buy a bunch of tools you can do a lot of brick with uh, just the hand tools it takes a little longer but um, you could do it and you know the point of this video is so anybody who's never done it before can um, hopefully realize that it's not it's not terribly hard and it's I, I like doing it I really enjoy it I'm a carpenter not a mason and um, and I, I really do I love the looks of brick and I also admire uh, the longevity you know the lifespan of, of brick as opposed to a lot of things you could use and uh, that's uh, that has value to me so I uh, whenever there's a good excuse to use brick I will use it I have a project I'm planning now that uh, I'm gonna put brick um, around a lot of glass <clears throat> more about that in the future so that's my uh, that's my mortar pan um, I, I doing this it's not only brick work but it's you know the custom and and kind of decorative part of it and um, I try not to force myself to use mortar faster than I'm really able to and um, so like you see there I keep a dry I put a I think a half a bag I was putting in um, at a time but mixing it only you know um, a few b bricks worth at a time and uh, it all works out so, so here I'm leveling from the the top of the brick to the bottom of the of that corner board and that's that's the line that uh, yeah as you see so the camera uh for whatever reason stopped and uh, you missed i ran short a room in here because i've decided to go this way and then fill in separately so starting here uh, of course finishing here i ran out of room measured it it was an inch and an eighth short that's kind of a lot over such a short space um, so I divided it up by four bricks and then as I was walking away I saw that this second brick was um, had fallen down so at a different angle than this and these and uh, so what I did is I just took that brick and divided my inch and an eighth by five it turned out to be three sixteenths and a little change. So basically, you see these how these bricks are. There's this kind of ugly bottom edge. This is one's not that bad, but a lot of them are uglier. I basically just cut that off of, of each of the five bricks, and now I've just put it out here, and it looks good. So I'm going to go from there. And my grandchildren are here, and I want to say hi. I think that was their first day of school that year. Okay, so next morning, here we are. Um, I was laying up this water table when the camera ran out of memory. Uh, so they didn't see any of this. And I just wanted you to see this creative use of the levels. Okay, levels can be used for a lot more than just... Um, leveling things checking level and playing, whoop, playing stick ball with and the rubber on the end actually makes a great brace because it grabs the wall the opposite wall yeah, anyway most of you are going to ridicule me about that but it did the trick so here we are now i'm going to point up i'm going to point up the remaining stuff but not before I work this corner and this corner is I hate masonry corners it's, it's always a problem um, so I've cornered myself into a, a position where oh, I got a loose brick there um, by by coming to this point 
on both sides, I have a couple of choices. Either I can cut and fit and weave like like this. I don't know if you can see that. And then put a, a little piece in the front, which is very precarious because um, not only does it have to overhang and have not much support behind, but freezing, thawing, you know, that can easily come loose. So what I think I've decided to do is take one brick and cut it into, you know, something that's going to be in this configuration and then fill in these two triangles in between. I may or may not drill and place a, uh, you know, steel pin in there. That's uh, one of the thoughts. <clears throat> Yeah, so you see that uh, some of these bricks get knocked loose. Um, you know, it's not, mortar is not glue, but uh, you might be surprised when the, when the mortar is still green, how much you can reactivate it and, and get those, those bricks w with, without taking it apart and redoing it. Um, how often and for how long you might be able to reactivate that mortar that's there and uh, you know th mason brush with a little water and just smack it on there and work work the mortar until it is reactivated in other words you know soft again and uh, how that can be easily fixed like that one there that's that's um, come loose but it's there's a lot more more to go and into that one. Oh, so here uh, on this, so the the end width of these bricks on the on the uh, water table are only two inches wide, and that gap there between the corner brick and the rest of the uh, soldier courses is mm, substantially more than two inches. So this is what bothered me about this method. I was going to have uneven joints there that I could not help. Um, in the end, I, I'm, I'm okay with the way it looks. Um, and it's um, it's lasted well, too. But um, your weird, funky little bricks here uh, on either side of that of that corner. No, so, and there it is. Where we're done. Uh, you see that it's a little wider, but when that mortar dries and becomes like whitish, it's going to look a lot better. And it does look a lot better. Um, that is it. That is the, the finished product. It was fun and, uh, and satisfying. Next time, we're going to pave all around that shed with, um, with the same brick, um, which is a whole other thing. Speed-wise, a whole other thing. So, I enjoyed having you here. See you next time.